Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Isomenon David Itute? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and subscribe to my channel. Also check out my Patreon and the Bella Grande Media Podcast. I will put the links to those items in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of this case. I'll move to the timeline of the incident, then offer my analysis. Isomenman David Atute grew up in Virginia and played football in high school. He was considered an exceptional athlete, and on December 16, 2020, he signed with Virginia Tech. In the spring of 2021, he was studying human development at the college and was in the football camp. On April 10, 2021, Itute used Tinder and was matched with a 40-year-old restaurant worker named Jerry Paul Smith. He thought that Smith was a woman because Smith represented himself in that way. Smith said that he was a 21-year-old emergency room worker named Angie Renee. Itute and Smith arranged a meeting engaged in oral sex, for which Smith paid Itute $50. Presumably, Etute engaged in the encounter, believing that he was with Angie Renee, not Jerry Smith. Etute's friends were not convinced that Smith was actually a woman, and they may have teased Etute about the interaction. On May 31, 2021, Etute made his way to Smith's apartment in downtown Blacksburg, Virginia. He claimed that his intent was to find out whether Angie was a man or a woman. He brought two other football players with him, but they remained in the hallway and did not enter the apartment. He told his friends that his plan was to run away if Angie was a man. Here's what Etute said happened next. He entered the apartment and noticed that Smith was wearing a hoodie. Smith took him to an upstairs bedroom, which was kept dark. After walking into Smith's bedroom, Etute grabbed Smith in an effort to determine if he was a male or female. He then used the light on his phone to illuminate Smith's face. He noticed that Smith had facial hair. At this point, Smith grabbed Etute in the groin area with one hand and reached down the side of the bed with the other hand. Etute was worried that Smith was reaching for a gun. He punched him two times, knocking Smith to the ground. Etute then punched him two more times and knocked him on his back. Etute punched Smith for a fifth time, then kicked and stomped him before leaving the apartment. He claimed it was self-defense. He said that he feared for his own life, and he thought he would not make it out of the apartment alive. Smith was bubbling and gurgling when Etute left the apartment. Blood was coming from Smith's nose. Etute joined his friends and departed the area. He was in the apartment for three minutes, according to surveillance video. He did not contact the police because he thought that Smith just needed some ice. I guess like magic ice that can heal someone who's been mortally wounded. The next day, Smith's brother discovered his body and notified the authorities. The autopsy revealed that every bone in Smith's face was broken and four of his teeth were missing. On June 2, Etute was arrested and charged with second-degree murder. He was released on $75,000 secured bond and placed under house arrest in Virginia Beach. His trial started on May 25, 2022. On May 27, Etute was found not guilty of second-degree murder. Now moving to my analysis. Was Etute actually guilty of murder? He was found not guilty in court. But was he culpable in reality? Let's take a look at the factors both for and against the idea that Etute was guilty, starting with the inculpatory factors. There is no question that Etute killed Smith. There were only two people in the apartment when Smith was mortally wounded. It's very unusual that a fatality would result from two people involved in a fistfight. Clearly, Etute punched Smith using a lot of force. He should have known that Smith required medical attention, yet he failed to notify the authorities. Also, if Etute thought Smith was reaching for a weapon, one would think he would have immediately called the police after exiting the apartment. Etute said he felt violated when he found out Smith was a man. One could argue that this supplied Etute with a motive to attack Smith. Smith had no defensive wounds on his arms or hands. Etute was an athlete who weighed over 200 pounds. Smith weighed 
153 pounds. It's hard to believe that Atute was ever in fear for his life. The story that Atute originally gave to the police when they interviewed him changed in two ways. He initially said that Smith tried to swat him away when he was punching him. At his trial, he testified that Smith tried to punch him. And, initially, Atute did not mention anything about Smith reaching for a gun. This story was first mentioned two days after Atute was released from jail. One of his friends said that Atute told him that Smith was reaching for something. At his trial, Atute testified that Smith was reaching for a gun. At this point, he would have known that the police found a knife under the mattress of Smith's bed. This makes it seem like Atute changed his story to make it look like self-defense. He took advantage of the fact that the police found that knife. Now moving to the exculpatory evidence. Jerry Smith had an extensive criminal history that he accumulated over the course of years. He was charged in Fairfax, Loudoun, and Montgomery counties in Virginia. He had convictions for filing a false police report, public intoxication, DUI, and reckless driving. He also had a number of charges that were dismissed. Smith frequently pretended to be a woman to have sex with young black men. He had been doing this since 2017. If the police discovered what Smith was doing under different circumstances, like when Smith was alive, he would have been charged with a crime. It's reasonable to believe that someone who victimized people in the way that Smith did could escalate to physical violence. The police determined that there was no gun in Smith's apartment, but they did find a knife between the mattress and the box spring of Smith's bed. The knife was located on the side of the bed where his body was found. Smith was breathing when Atute left him in the apartment. Therefore, Atute could have believed that Smith would recover from his injuries. When considering all the evidence, do I think that Atute was guilty? According to the legal standard, I agree with the jury. I think that Atute was not guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. Jerry Smith provoked a dangerous encounter by being deceptive and taking Atute to a dark bedroom. When the two met, Smith was the only one committing a crime. There's no way to prove that Smith was not reaching for the knife under his mattress. The prosecutor argued that the reach toward the mattress did not constitute the necessary overt act required for self-defense. Normally, I would agree. Like, why would someone assume that Smith was reaching for a weapon? But when considering the context, I think it was an overt act. Again, Smith created a dangerous situation through his deception. So that was my opinion based on the legal standard, but what about in reality? I think that Atute was culpable for something like manslaughter in reality, but not second-degree murder. I think he was shocked that Smith was a man, and he reacted with violence. He made up the story about Smith reaching for something so that he had a defense. Another possibility is that Smith was reaching for the knife because he was being beaten to death by a man in his apartment. I think this entire case came down to that knife being under Smith's mattress. If the police did not recover that knife, I think that Atute would have been convicted of either second-degree murder or manslaughter. His entire life was changed because of Smith's decision to put a knife under his mattress. Without the knife, he was looking at decades in prison. With it, he walked free. Moving to the next section, here are my thoughts on a few items that stood out to me in this case. Item number one, many people were upset about the outcome of this case because they believed that Atute used a gay panic or trans panic defense. These defenses are based on the idea that a person can become so upset by discovering another person's sexual orientation or gender identity that they would commit a violent act. These defenses are banned in the state of Virginia. I don't think that either one of these defenses applied in this case. The argument that Atute made was self-defense from physical violence. As opposed to a gay or trans panic defense, this was more like a shooting or stabbing panic defense. These defenses are generally considered to be reasonable due to the unpleasant nature of shooting or stabbing. Most people believe that it is reasonable to panic under the threat of being shot or stabbed, mostly due to the horrible pain and dying parts. The prosecution's theory of the crime was that Atute became upset when he found out Smith was a man and killed him in the heat of the moment but that had nothing to do with the defense that Atute actually offered. He was not making that argument. He was simply trying to remain 
alive. Item number two, I find it curious that Atute did not realize Smith was a man during their first encounter. Atute was referred to as gullible during the trial, which is the understatement of the century. Did he really believe that he would meet a young, attractive woman using Tinder, they would engage in oral sex, and then she would pay him $50? He didn't immediately find this to be unusual and suspicious. I get the sense that Smith actually paid Atute $50 because Smith probably thought that Atute knew he was a man, like Smith wanted to encourage him to return for another encounter at a later date. Moving to the last item, number three, Smith did not deserve to die, but he did behave in a reckless manner. He did not have respect for the law or his victims. He lived a double life, which he kept secret from his family. The world knew him as a dangerous driver, but covertly he was committing even more serious crimes. He repeatedly ran his scam, knowing that he was playing a dangerous game. He put himself in a position where he could be killed and there would be no legal consequences for the man who ended his life. Those are my thoughts on the case of Izamenman David Atute. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.